Hey everybody, this is your daily dose of all things royal. Welcome back, my gorgeous, good-looking friends. In today's video, we're wrapping up our series of crazy days and nights blind items. If you are new to this channel, welcome. If you're looking to catch up on this series, don't fret. I've created a playlist below, so feel free to visit anytime you want. Before we get started, I'd like to ask a kind favor. If you like my content and you find yourself coming back and you haven't yet subscribed, please be a part of our community. And if you like the video, please hit the like button and share so more people can see what's really going on. Now, let's begin. December 22nd, 2021. All of this buzz about the illiterate one being called to give a deposition. The only relevant information she could have would be from a long time ago when she was yachting. Did she travel in the same circles as her in-law? As a quick recap, last year, Virginia Jufri filed a civil lawsuit against Prince Andrew, and her lawyer, David Boyce, had brought up that they might be deposing Meghan Markle. Because, get this, guys, she was known to tell the truth. And also her close proximity to him. Now, they didn't disclose if the close proximity meant because she was in the royal family or if it had anything to do with her days as a yachting girl, allegedly. Obviously, there was a purpose in bringing up Meghan Markle as a potential person that they were going to depose. There are a lot of reasons as to why we could speculate her being deposed. Some speculate that because she was on the inside as a non-blood royal that she would be easier to flip since she was in the family and could have heard something or observed something. Another speculation is that potentially she is aware of some of the people in this dark network that Jeffrey had while he was alive and saw some things, possibly participated in some things, not saying anything, just speculating. And then there's also the fact that she is a good liar. And if the price was right, could possibly have been convinced to tell a narrative that became her truth and not the truth. I know many of you are convinced that she knew Andrew before she met Harry. And the reason why is because she was allegedly a yacht girl. And many of you have seen this photo in front of you. Yes, that is Prince Andrew, and some would say that sitting next to him was Meghan's best friend, Marcus Anderson. And the girl with the dark hair standing up with her back to us is Meghan Markle. I think we need to set the record straight. That is not Marcus Anderson, and that is not Meghan Markle. And let me show you why. Notice that the gentleman that's sitting next to Andrew has a tattoo on his right bicep, actually lower bicep. It's large enough that it's sort of wraps around. Now here's a picture with Marcus and Megan. Notice that Marcus does not have a tattoo on his right arm. Now for those that are not convinced or still skeptical, let's use a little common sense. The photo with Andrew was taken in 2001. Marcus Anderson is around 41 years old, 42 years old. In 2001, he would have been in his early 20s. Now, does this photo look like a man who is in his early 20s? Also, Meghan Markle didn't know Marcus Anderson in 2001. She met Marcus in 2011 when she moved to Toronto. And if that particular detail is not enough and you are still thinking that, yes, that is Meghan, I'm going to show you why it's not Meghan. Now, these photos have been floating around saying that it's her, but it's not. Just by looking at the body structure who is proportionate and has a waist, as opposed to Megzi's boxy figure. And if anything, use common sense again. Look at the height difference. The woman that we thought was Megan is the same height as Andrew, but when you look at the picture of them on the balcony, she's so much shorter. This photo is not of Marcus Anderson and Meghan Markle. So please, let's all put this to bed. Now, I'm not ruling out that she was not a yacht girl, she just wasn't caliber to hang in the Prince Andrew, Jeffrey, Clinton, elite club. I mean, Megan was too old. But that doesn't mean she didn't try. And if we were to do or play the game, have you ever heard of Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon? 
I'm sure if we looked at all these suspect characters, we could do a six degrees of Meghan Markle. There's no doubt in my mind. Even in this picture, if you look at the girl that's circled there, that was Jeffrey's girlfriend. So she definitely was hanging around these people. But do I necessarily think she got to the top tier where Prince Andrew was? No, I don't think she did. I mean, if you haven't realized it yet, there's nothing really special about Megan. She's a basic chick. It was never about the charity or foundation, which has never had a clear goal. It was only set up to make it look like the ginger-haired one and the actress were not just solely interested in lining their own pockets. Well, that and fame too. And they're talking about their farce-well foundation. It is apparent that they are scattered all over the place and that this particular entity that they have created is just that. It is a way to grift off of vulnerable people and exploiting suffering for profit. What is baffling to me is why the IRS has yet to investigate them. In 2020, they filed their taxes and reported that they had less than $50,000 in receipts. Well, that can't be considering that they held fundraisers all throughout from 2019 to 2021. Of that, as you can see on this chart that the Sussex Squad so brilliantly put together for us to look at, is just look at Archie's birthday in 2020. They did over $73,000 for a charity called Homeboy Industries. Now, we all know that Homeboy Industries is a charity that Megan at the time promoted because it was, I want to say, trendy to them because of the whole Black Lives Matter movement. But yeah, if they were taking money and they took in $73,000 in donations, then that does require a detailed tax return not the easy way out that they took. So I believe that the IRS must investigate them because this smells foul. You know I'm not a fan of the illiterate one. <laughs> Join the club. But it's primarily because of her hypocrisy and her constant need for attention. I've never heard of her committing an act of violence against anyone, let alone a child. Despite the hype and buzz, she did not hit a child. Now, I'm not sure what they're talking about here on this one. If you guys know, leave your comments below. I have to agree. I think there might be some verbal abuse, but definitely not physical. At least I hope not. January 16, 2022. The ginger-haired one is implying through a recent statement that the U.S. is covering the costs of his security and also providing secret service and he wants the same thing at home. Also, if it doesn't happen, it gives the illiterate one an excuse to stay behind, which is what she really wants anyway. The ginger-haired one didn't have any issues with it last time he was home. Now, this is when Harry decided to go ahead and sue the UK government for his security, and I don't remember him ever saying outright that the U.S. was paying for his security. However, I do know that when they came over to New York during their fake royal tour and de Blasio had hosted them, I do know that he was provided, and it came out of my taxes, funded police to follow them around. Now, I can't verify this, but I wouldn't be surprised. The illiterate one apparently blocked some type of statement from her significant other that was going to offer kind words to his stepmother after a recent announcement. And that was when Camilla caught COVID and, yeah, they said nothing. I don't know how true this is, but I wouldn't be surprised. It is not about being safe or not. That is just ridiculous. It's all about the fact that the illiterate one doesn't want to see a bunch of negative press about herself for entire visits to the country. <laughs> this is talking about putting up a stink to get this security. As If you look at the date, February 18, 2022 is right before the Jubilee, or the Jubilee was coming up. And I do believe that she also was 
possibly afraid that people could be throwing tomatoes at her. <laughs> I don't know where she got that idea. Now, this one is pretty much to the point. There are people dying, and all the illiterate one cares about is that her message was not acknowledged by the president of that country. Tell you what you can do. Call up the former housewife and tell her you want to distribute the blankets and sleeping bags the former housewife is sending to Poland to all the refugees. Actually, do something. She won't, though. She should. If she did, maybe she would actually have something for Netflix they wouldn't reject. Oh, that's a burn. And that's talking about having her Sussex squad go and attack the president of Ukraine for not acknowledging them. And meanwhile, you have Bethany Frankel, who genuinely is a humanitarian and does help in many instances of times when there is a crisis. And the Ukraine war wasn't any different. And, I, you know, I, I, I applaud her. I think uh, she is a great example for the people of New York. Again, I'm not a fan of the illiterate one, but filing a meritless lawsuit against her just to pitch a reality show just makes her look like a victim, which she is not. And this is talking about Samantha Markle's lawsuit against her sister. Now, I disagree with this. I think Samantha has a good case and she needs to go after her sister because if she doesn't do it, who's going to do it to put her in her place so she can cut this nonsense out? The ginger-haired one could go alone, of course, if he's so worried about security for his family. It isn't about that, though. It is because the illiterate one never wants to step foot in the country again. If it wasn't security, it would be something else. Megan has given her position during the Cut article that she did, in which she revealed that she had packed up their belongings at the Windsor home, Frogmore Cottage, during their visit as part of the Queen's Platinum Jubilee celebrations in June. Nah, she's never going back if she doesn't have to. Oh, Megan will go back to London. She just won't go back and ever be with the family again just because she's such a coward. What I see her doing is going back to London and showing up on their turf and exactly that, doing things for publicity. Coming up, I think, in November, she's going to be back in London for the paid award that she paid for, for GQ, I think. Don't be surprised that there are going to be future things or events that she's going to be going to in London just so she can stay in the face of the royal family purely to antagonize them, just because she's petty like that. It was never a good look for the illiterate one and her husband that they took the free place to live in the north of the border country. Now it looks way worse, and one wonders which of them had the connection to the bad guy. No one will ever ask them, though. Was it yachting or shady business deals that brought them to him? And that is talking about the house or the mansion that they stayed in when they went to Canada and allegedly it belonged to a Russian oligarch. So it was reported that this property named Mufler was under a trust. Hmm, sound familiar? Did you guys know that the Manashitsho house in California is also under a trust and yes, that house belonged to another Russian billionaire or millionaire? Hmm. To be honest, anything that these two are involved in, I don't trust. March 24th, 2022. It doesn't appear that the conglomerate itself issued a directive. Rather, the takedown of videos negative to the illiterate one and her husband are coming from a PR slash bot farm which sends complaints nonstop asking that the videos be taken down. The videos are then removed and it is up to the creator to try and get them back online, which rarely ever works unless your videos are making the conglomerate a lot of money. For those that have been a part of this community for a while, some several years now, you have witnessed these events happen. And we can confirm that they are directly related to the couple in Montecito. 
all of the YouTubers that speak out in telling the truth about the deceit and the manipulation of Meghan Markle and Prince Harry all have been impacted. The deliberate attempts by this couple in order to censor and silence people. I'm going to make a recommendation and suggest that you check out Murky Meg's video that she did six months ago on how this PR takedown is carried out using these bot attacks. If you're familiar with technology, it would be similar to like a DDoS attack. But this video is excellent to kind of summarize exactly what we as YouTubers go through, as well as others on social media, and how Meghan Markle is trying to silence anybody who has an opinion about her that she doesn't like. It's this type of behavior I don't condone and why I speak out against her because it's dangerous. And if this woman thinks that she wants to get into politics and are using these kinds of tactics, then at some point this becomes very authoritarian. We have all witnessed the little power and status that she has managed to achieve by marrying into the royal family. This lunatic doesn't need any more power because the more power that she has, she will use it for malicious intent as she enjoys seeing people suffer if she does not get her way. And if you don't believe me, just take a look at what she did to Prince Philip and the Queen. This is someone you don't want in power with access to government intelligence, period. Add in IPP status, if Harry does succeed in winning his court case in the UK, then she's untouchable at that point. We really need to stay focused and make sure that that doesn't happen because she is dangerous and a menace to society. In my humble opinion, which is my God-given right. It is funny that the illiterate one wants to use her new platform to build up women and make them stronger, but to do that is going to use a ton of money to destroy the companies they have built, if they happen to use a name she wants to own outright. And that is with that train wreck of a podcast, Archetypes. Now around this time was when she filed for the trademark Archetypes. I don't know who she has advising her and what they are smoking in California, but this was probably the dumbest idea yet to date. And if you look at the application she submitted in March and it hasn't even been picked up because it's so ridiculous. When we look at this podcast now today, it's just laughable because whatever it was that she was supposed to do with it is not the garbage that we are receiving now. It's so obvious that this podcast has turned into her speaking points out against those authors, Tom Bauer and Valentine Lowe, in some of the names that she has been called, or the labels, stereotypes. Wouldn't call it archetypes. I don't even think she understands what the word archetypes mean. Anyway, Spotify, I think you need to do the public a service by putting a warning label on this podcast and let people know that this could be detrimental to your mental health. Because it's so toxic, divisive, and racist, as well, it's also pushing out a lot of misinformation and setting women back. It's not really helping us. The illiterate one brought four stylists, a makeup person, and a hair person, along with other staff. And this was this year during the Invictus Games when they went to Europe and was pretending to act like the Obamas as if they were campaigning for an election. I don't have anything nice to say about her outfit choices, so I will choose to remain silent on this one. Instead of hiring the very best people, it seems more and more that the illiterate one simply hires people so they can name drop them to others so they can feel more important about themselves. It's so unfortunate that this rising star, Miranda Barbeau, decided to take on the Sussexes because everyone knows that these two are a career killer. Soon enough, Miranda is going to find out what a lunatic she's working for. And uh, she's not going to be able to say anything because I'm sure that the NDA is so ironclad. It's probably why we have not heard from Toya Holness. I wouldn't be surprised if she was in therapy now.
Get well soon, Toya. Just the fact the producers thought they could get her says a ton. The producers of this dancing reality show offered a spot to the illiterate one. It was not an immediate no. And that, my friends, was Dancing with the Stars. Now, to be honest, I would watch because I think we would have hours of entertainment picking it apart. You know what's amazing is that Megan's dad had paid so much money in dance lessons. And when I see her on this tour and the lack of rhythm that she has, it just shows how awkward and insecure she is. It's astonishing the opportunities that she has been afforded and nothing has worked out for her. How do you fail at life so badly that you still make out like a champion? I don't get this. Like, where is the karma in any of this? When you leave an event before it ends, the story becomes about you. That is what the illiterate one wanted. However, the world's social media timelines are filled with her sister-in-law and nephew. Yes, I think it was the best decision that Megan left the Jubilee because so many of us were so happy not to see those two they were like a negative, dark cloud hanging over wonderful, beautiful celebration. And even better, it was so beautiful to see Catherine and Louis and how adorable he was throughout the Jubilee. To be honest, once they left, it changed the energy. And who, who thought about them? We were happy that they were gone. And you know what? We know that. Megan was seething because people weren't talking about her. They were talking about Catherine and Louie. Dated June 14th, 2022. It looks like the illiterate one and her husband are headed for interview two with the one named talk show host. And we have been hearing this for a while now. And this is with Oprah. I suspect that this is true because her PR team initially were the ones that went full out court press by pushing out this so-called leak. Now, if you think about it, all the signs are there. Time has passed. Oprah probably wants to sort of redeem her reputation. Not to mention there were some major events like the Jubilee and the Queen's funeral that Oprah wants to get the details on because she sees opportunity to make more money and also get herself back into the spotlight. Writer slash mouthpiece for the illiterate one is finding himself increasingly shut out by the illiterate one. Don't be shocked if he lashes out and throws her under the bus. Recently, well, during that time, Omid Scobie was not being given first access to news, and I think this was prompted by when Megan went to Uvalde and she ended up feeding information to Smelly Hall from BuzzFeed to Post. Now, this next one is inaccurate. It says, The deal between the audio streaming service and the illiterate one and her husband is not working out. A breakup announcement is imminent. And that's talking about Spotify. And, uh, yeah, we're still being tortured by having her on the airwaves. So, yeah, that is not accurate. This next one says, you remember that children's book that was released last year to a lot of fanfare, but not such great sales? In the weeks that followed the release, the number of sales really rose exponentially. The reason? It is now estimated that the author of said book, who all of you know, bought about 70% of the total number of the books sold. And yes, we know that it is The Bench. I'm not going to read another review ever again. But I bet Ms. Markle is probably working on The Bench, the sequel, now showcasing where Harry probably sleeps at night. Speaking of trying to rid themselves of something, this former cable actress turned worldwide celebrity should know the difference between suppressing something so you don't look bad and being exonerated. 
And this is in relation to the bullying report. So once again, Megan ropes in Smelly Hall to spin a false narrative on the story that she wants people to think is going on with the bullying report. Hence, Smelly decides to write that the palace was not investigating the allegations, but instead on how the palace handled those claims, right? Well, Smelly Hall is notorious for putting out misinformation. Case in point, here's an example. Let's not forget that she is responsible for the reason why Yankee Wally was pulled down. Now, this next one, I can't confirm if it's true or not. If you have any information, leave your comment below. It says the illiterate one and her husband have signed a lease on a house in Bel Air. The illiterate one has been getting tired of the commute. Now, I don't know if they actually rented a place in Bel Air. Uh, allegedly, they're looking in Hope Ranch or somewhere in Santa Barbara. I don't think any of this is true. I think they are living separately, but that's just my opinion. I also think that they don't own property. I do believe that they could be renting. This next one says, the illiterate one had multiple meetings with the ghostwriter writing her husband's biography. She wanted to make sure there was a dumpster full of dirt in the book. Oh, no doubt. And if you notice the date, July 26, 2022, that was around the time when Tom Bauer's book dropped and a whole bunch of grenades went off. So, of course, she was scrambling to retaliate back. And there's no doubt in my mind that. She definitely had put some pretty nasty stuff in there. And remember, the queen was still alive. So what we're seeing now with them scrambling to try and fix their book and then this Netflix documentary slash reality show, there's no doubt in my mind that emotion played into it and that what was said, the nasty, nasty stuff to retaliate was a response to this book. Let's hope that Netflix and Penguin say, no, we're going to leave it as is because we now have to make money. The illiterate one has at least one domain registered that makes it seem as if she would like to run for president. And then it says, since the blind, and they had announced this in a few blinds back where it says there has been another one found which would make two. No, my friend, there are more than two. And as you can see here, Meghan Markle has been buying up domains, and this just makes her look even more psychotic. And God help us all if we're going to have to be dealing with this woman till 2040. Oh, no. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. August 4th, 2022. On the one-year anniversary of a project the illiterate one announced, it would be nice to have a reporter track how many of these 40 celebrities asked actually did what the big announcements said they were all going to do. You know, if it had been completed, there would have been a celebration. I can't wait to hear what is announced today to great fanfare that won't be completed and to which no follow-up questions will ever be asked. And that was Meghan Markle's 40 by 40, which was a complete and total flop. And this year, Megan's birthday came and gone, thank God. But what was even more beautiful, almost poetic justice, was People magazine putting Kate Middleton, Princess of Wales, on the cover on her birthday. And, you know, it was that day that I recognized something was wrong with her PR. Could it be around this time that? Sunshine Sachs said sayonara? Probably. And now we're into August 15, 2022. Says the charities being visited next month by the illiterate one and her husband already have shooting schedules provided to them by a streaming service. I guess they couldn't get enough footage with the few charities here willing to shoot. Yeah, this was their bright idea to do a fake royal tour over in Europe. The whole thing was so fake and contrived 
And you can see that everything was staged and set up to the people that they brought in to cheer them on. As you can see, there's the microphones. And yeah, I mean, of course, they're staging it to get footage for Netflix. And realistically, how entertaining is it going to be? Probably boring. I mean, who's going to want to watch this crap? So now we're at towards the end of August, and it says the illiterate one's lapdog reporter is trying to worm his way back into the good graces by writing piece after piece, praising her to the moon. It is such an obvious suck-up job, but she loves it, and she sent him an email that just said thanks, and he won't stop showing everyone. Now, at this time, this is the launch of Archetypes. I believe the first episode was that week. And yes, Scobie was overpraising. In fact, he wrote an article for Yahoo, which I didn't read because, you know, it's garbage. But yeah, that's what was going on. Now, this one, it says September 10th, 2020, it's two days after the Queen passed away, and this blind item comes out. The illiterate one is telling friends to leak that she is pregnant. Now, perhaps maybe this was something that she was thinking about, but I will bet the palace was onto her and probably told her to cut the shit. Whether it be by her just initiating the thought to tell her friends to leak that she's pregnant did spark fire on social media, and our very own body language guy had posted this, which then caught wind of some media outlets and they reported it. So. It was out there, and she got what she wanted if this was the end state, people talking about her. Now, this next one is interesting. It says, The battle's raging between the illiterate one and her husband over the direction of some podcast episodes and his book are epic. These are other people involved, which is giving brand new insights into the relationship or the destruction of it. What's interesting is that this was directly after the funeral, and I can only imagine that chaos ensued because, as I had mentioned earlier in this video, Tom Bauer's book came out, and I'm sure there were a lot of things that had been put into the podcast as well as the book, per Megan, because she wanted to have the last word and a guarantee that She's regretting some of the things that she has now said. So recently, the author, Tina Brown, had spoken to the New York Post and had talked about the possibility of Harry's book not making it to see the light of day because what she believes could happen is that King Charles would end up having to bail his son out and pay back the money that they took from these two streaming giants in order to squash the the book from coming out. And I think it's a good chance that he would do it to protect Camilla. Now, as far as Megan, I doubt that she would want to do that because she has nothing really to lose now. She's going to go gun, guns blazing. But I do feel that there is a potential opportunity for her for King Charles to pay her off, to keep her mouth shut and to go away. I think that would be the best thing King Charles could do for humanity, in my opinion. And finally, we are at the last blind item. Well, it's not the last, but it's the most recent one that has been put out. And it says, the illiterate one still owns the earrings from the killer. They do not belong to the family in general. They specifically belong to the illiterate one, and the north of the border influencer showed photos of them to a friend. So, this last one revealed yesterday, October 12, and they revealed that it was Mohammed bin Salman, and that was the person that gave the earrings. Now, we all know, and I'm not going to talk about exactly what happened with this prince but just know that she still has the earrings and as i said before i guarantee that those earrings have been broken up into different stones and they're all ready 
either sold or made into other pieces of jewelry, and somehow we will never, ever see them again. My final thoughts after doing this whole entire exercise and getting a full picture of the things that have come out in the media and the things that have been said and things that have been confirmed, it does show the deceit, it does show the manipulation as well as the intent of a person who definitely has an agenda to seek power, fame, and money. And she has demonstrated that she is willing to lie, cheat, and even hurt people in order to achieve that. What I hope is that people can see these videos and share it so people can understand that we're dealing with a very dangerous person. And, you know, I thank everybody for supporting this channel and encouraging me to continue to do this because I think now. Many of you can see why so many of us had been calling her out from day one. There will be more blind items coming as long as this woman is continuing to grift. So I will bring that to you. But in the meantime, please let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And I will be back soon. Bye. Such a broad. <laughs>